Hello Africa, this is the interview and I am Ignatius Anon. Conversations around sexuality are seen as taboo in most parts of Africa. The lives of sexual minorities have for long been filled with rejection and pain, and even for some, suicide. Imagine your friend, a loved one or a relative who identifies as queer, having to deal with this on a daily. Queer, if you don't already know, is the broad term for members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, plus more, or simply LGBTQI plus community. On the interview today, our focus is to put these issues into perspective. Over the years, the dominant narratives around sexual minorities have been negative and dehumanizing. First, let's breathe. Uganda has denied seeking to reintroduce death penalty for gay sex. The debate continues. In August this year, Kenya became the first African nation to count intersex people in its national census. A big win for activists. Despite this, most nations on the continent have inhumane sanctions for consexual relationships between queer people. Today, I invite you on a journey with an open mind and an open heart for what I call a must-have conversation. My intention is to take you to a place where human dignity is respected and upheld. My guests will help us understand what African sexualities are and the big question, can you be queer and still have a belief in how part of God and how challenging is reporting on LGBTQI plus and religion issues in Africa? We'll hear from journalists working in sub-Saharan Africa. But first, joining us from Harare, Zimbabwe, is feminist and globally recognized human rights advocate Isabella Matabanajo. Carl Collinson is a Cape Town-based freelance journalist who has done extensive work on sexual minorities in Africa. And Professor Kola Adebayo is with the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyakuta, in Nigeria. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Iggy. Thank you. So before we begin, Bella, um, may I know what your preferred pronouns are? Um, thank you for asking. That's a very respectful way to begin the interview. I prefer to be called her or she. And Carl, Prof? Uh, me, uh, he or him. For me, it will be he or him. Okay. So, Bella, can you help debunk the disturbing <laughs> myths propagated by critics against sexual and gender minorities in Africa? I loved how you introduced the show, Ignatius, because, yes, you are correct that there are narratives of rejection, narratives of pain, but there are also narratives of joy, of absolute desire, of tremendous pleasure, happiness, and personhood. And I think this is why this show is particularly important at this time. Right. So, Carl, uh, thank you for that, Bella, first of all. Carl, Africa is known to be deeply religious. Uh, there have been huge pushback on issues of queerness in some countries. Do you think one can be queer and be accepted as a believer? Absolutely. I think that um, there's often the, the dominant narrative tends to be that queerness and religion are two separate things and they can never be, um, you know, you, you can't be a queer believer. Um, but I've interviewed numerous people who, um, who have shown that religion and their religion and their sexuality um, can be, they can be queer and religious at the same time. And this is across the continent. Right. Now, Prof, uh, how do you respond to critics whose entrenched position are repressing rights of queer communities? I, I think there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there. And there is also a tendency for people to fear things that they do not know. So I think that as a community, we need to provide more information about the humanness of being queer. Um, I have a personal experience that shows that the more queer people you know personally, the less afraid you are, and therefore, the more you are willing to accept uh, a queer person into your 
own small community. So for me, I think there is a lot of negative uh, narration out there, and we need to change that mindset about queer people. Let me go to Bella. I know that you've contributed to a book on African sexualities. What are they, and why have most people not been educated on them? So thank you for asking. Um, and this is the tremendous opus edited by uh, Professor Sylvia Tamale out of Uganda. And it contains 68 contributors, really. Um, it's voluminous, as you can see. And it's really a very complex um, text that interrogates, that questions, that uh, deconstructs and debunks the about sexuality and deliberately is that it um, positions our sexualities as plural rather than singular and linear and hierarchical. And it also positions our sexualities as very nuanced and complex um, from a place of violence. Yes, we admit that but also from a place of consent and desire and humanity um, and a place of love, really, a place that is tremendously sacred in terms of our African belief system. Right. Carl, let me ask you this. Yes. Are there religious groups across all faith-based organizations that support queer communities? And how essential is this in the world we live in today? There are numerous groups. Um, there are, like in South Africa alone, we'll have Al -Fitra, the Al-Fitra organization, which is a Muslim faith-based organization. There's inclusive and affirmative ministries. Um, I've also interviewed people like in countries such as Uganda um, and even Nigeria who work, on, who work on supporting and including queer people within, um, in, within the faith sector. Um, and it's hugely, hugely, hugely important. I think any initiative that offers a welcoming, um, a, a welcome to, to marginalized groups are hugely, hugely important at this time, whether it's queer people, refugees, um, any kind of marginalized grouping that's essential. Right. Prof, again, there's the conversation that Africa as a continent is not ready because the values of, of, of the continent or the people within the continent does not align with what we are discussing today. And um, y y you hold that position. Yes, I, I think as a continent, we tend not to discuss queerness. In fact, sexuality generally, um, be it uh, prostitution, be it uh, polygamy, be it uh, being gay or being a lesbian, uh, the traditional African like to adopt a see no evil, hear no evil attitude. But when you then bring in Christianity and Islam, it changes the dialogue. And I think that change in dialogue has influenced the way Africans are represented when issues of uh, queerness is being uh, discussed. But I, I think that as a people, we need more information about the diversity in our society and that being queer is not the same thing as being evil or being bad, which is the wrong information that is out there. Right. So how difficult is it for journalists to report on LGBTQ plus issues in their various newsrooms? I spoke to a few of them. Let's hear them. Editorial interference, you get journalists and sub-editors um, and also your news editors who are still against telling these kind of stories and that narrative we really need to change because everyone has a voice and their stories needs to be told within every media house we possibly get. If we're able to communicate to people in the languages that they understand, perhaps we'd go a little bit uh, some way in terms of bridging the gap and making sure that people understand. The reaction from readers and South Africans um, that sometimes, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but that can sometimes be a little bit problematic. Malawi being a conservative nation with most people 
um, claiming to be religious or declaring themselves as religious, when we publish or even broadcast stories on LGBTI issues, there are a lot of homophobic comments that are posted. Some of them are even become personal, even attacking your own personalities. Professor Depayo, what do you make of these responses from African journalists? You see, I, I, I take it that journalists are human beings, their editors are human beings, and they have their own social biases. And that, whether they like it or not, reflects in what they report or what they choose to broadcast. Thank you. Bella, uh, we're wrapping up now. Talk to me about how the resistance is affecting the mental health status of the African sexual minority community within the continent. We're not just talking about um, subjects. We are talking about human beings who deserve absolute dignity and humanity. Um, and we have a context where black, lesbian, gay, transgender, intersex, and queer people are committing suicide because of the kind of social pressures that um, the professor has referred to. And we need to ask ourselves this question really is, how do we reject this kind of oppression of human beings? I appreciate your contribution on the program today. It's my pleasure. And before we go, let me share one of my favorite quotes with you. Quote, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. And of quote, this matters and so be an agent for positive change in this world. Thank you for watching. I'm Ignatius Anna and goodbye.